The organ is a very complex and ancient musical instrument. Basically, like a flute. You physically create the notes, so as you press down the key, the wind goes through the pipe. As one of my friends in college who used to make fun of the organ called it a big box of whistles. Constantly brings air into those pipes and makes them sound. That surrounds all of our music here, uh, with choral and organ music as well as instruments, with a kind of acoustic halo. So I'm going to play the uh, prelude from the Prelude and Fugue in G by J.S. Bach, BW 541. Great. So my name is Benjamin Sheen. I'm the acting director of music here at St. Thomas Church in the heart of New York City on the 53rd and 5th Street in New York. I've been playing since I was 11 years old, the organ anyway. The piano I started uh, when I was five or six years old, uh, along with the cello. And in 2012, John Scott rang me up, um, and a few evenings turned into a few months, which turned into my permanent job as assistant organist, and I've been here since. St. Thomas here is in the middle of a, of a huge renovation that sort of all come, all come together at one time. All the windows um, taken out, cleaned, restored, put back in, several million pieces of glass. It's always music versus building staff here. You know, if we need to practice or something and they've covered the organ in plastic or something, you know, it's, I mean, we sometimes give up. You know, we've been in here and they've been drilling through the roof or removing these windows and it's just, you just give up. Just... Certainly within the within the cities that I've visited and on my travels around the US, you know, there's there's a great support for, for organists and there's a there's a sort of great respect between between everyone. Um, there seems to be much more of a kind of community over here. I think because in some ways in the UK there are so many church musicians, church organists, um, all up and down the country, is that so it's it's difficult to sort of get everyone in, in one place. Being on the uh, intersection of 53rd and 5th, where uh, there's no shortage of noise and uh, disturbance here. Um, we have subway lines running underneath, and we have construction work going on nearly 24-7 at the moment. Um, we have tourists coming in and out of the building. Um, we have bells going, um, and then when one of us is, is practicing, there's the organ on top of all of that. So it's, it's, a, it's a noisy place, very difficult place to record. I think the real enjoyment with playing the organ is the immense power you have between your, at your fingertips and at your feet. That sound, that overwhelming massive sound has served for hundreds of years as uh, uh, something that points beyond uh, earthly life, that's something that is almost godlike in its majesty. You know, there's not many people who can play an instrument that will echo around a building for nine seconds. Organists are often accused of being egomaniacs because one person gets to sit there and create something so enormous and loud. Um, so we have to be careful about that sometimes. This is the first movement. So it sounds very voluptuous and it's modern music. So some of the scrunches of the chords will be exciting and peppery. I grew up in Eastern North Carolina, um, very rural area. I didn't really grow up with an organ in my church. And then when I was in college, I started noticing the organ more. And I thought, that is incredible. So I started taking lessons on the side there. And um, one of the influencing factors of that is making a living as a pianist where there's thousands and thousands of pianists graduating from conservatories every year. I just thought, well, I really would like to pay my rent and I love the instrument. So I shifted closer to the pipe organ.
This pipe organ is a Kilgan pipe organ. It was built in 1950. This organ is 38 ranks. It has about 2,500 pipes, but organs can have up to 30,000 pipes. We had a fire a few years ago and we had an insurance settlement, so it enabled us to replace the keyboards, which were very worn. The coupler rail was added, a computer system was added, and new stop tabs were added, and a few ad adjustments to what the organ can do. There's basic organ sounds of flutes, you can paste all the flutes together, so to speak. Then you can mix the strings with the flute sounds and you start building tone. And when you see these little Roman numerals, those are really short little pipes. And that gives brilliance to the sound. So you can start mixing all of these together and you get basic organ tone. in my feet, the 16-foot tone are the deep, low sounds. And if you mix that with all the other things we've had before, that can create quite a nice sound. and I waited a few minutes so you could hear the reverb go down the nave of the church. One of the things that organists say, the most important stop on the organ is the room. So if you're in a really dry acoustic and you don't have all that reverb, your organ's not gonna sound very good. I approach the organ as a vehicle for playing music. I think the music always comes first to me as opposed to the instrument. I just think today we listen to so many things on iPods and computerized music and hearing live music in a space really brings life to the music in a way that nothing else can. So playing a big Bach prelude and fugue on an organ that can handle that is, is really bringing the piece to life in the way that it was conceptualized, like the violin and the cello and the piano and all of those things. I think sometimes people want to separate the organ off into a little camp, but I don't feel that way. When I was just very young, we had a huge record collection. I remember hearing E. Part Biggs playing Bach works, and I also enjoyed its connection with the church and religious institutions and that piece of expression, so putting that all together was very attractive to me. The St. Wilfred Club is a club of the creme de la creme organists in New York City that you must be voted into. One of the most exclusive and elite groups of organists in New York City. When I first came to New York, some of my organist friends, I heard them talking about going to the St. Wilfred Club and it's kind of a secret club and I didn't know what it was. And it started out being an all male organist organization because back then when it started all of the big churches in the city and really all of I think the churches had male organists as, as their directors of music and actually here at Heavenly Rest I was the first woman in New York to be director of music at um, one of the large churches in New York as a woman. It was started in 1908 by a group of organists who wanted to get together and just hang out. It's a fabulous opportunity for us to 
put down all of our tensions and stresses with being great musicians and just have a good time. The St. Wilfred's Club usually meets for dinner uh, on the east side, and there's a tradition of having a speaker at the various uh, dinner meetings. Uh, and this past uh, time, it was a, a finance person talking about money management, which uh, is, is an interesting topic and one that I suspect a, a lot of musicians uh, don't know very much about. Here we are at St. John the Divine at the organ console. We are about three quarters of the way up the cathedral uh, in the choir area, and we're sitting at the console, which is directly beneath the pipes. This is an excerpt from Mozart's Fantasia in F minor, uh, K608, one of Mozart's late works and a very, very dramatic piece, as you'll hear. St. John the Divine is one of the largest uh, church buildings anywhere. It is, a, we claim it's the largest Gothic cathedral in the world. The combination of room and acoustic here is really special. The room and the organ work together in a kind of symbiotic relationship. So whether I knock over a chair or whether I play a glorious chord on the organ, uh, that sound bounces around off the stone and tile for about eight seconds. I think I very rarely found any organists who are not smart. But certainly we're, uh, we're an eccentric bunch. You know, it's, uh, it's a very uh, unique field, a unique thing to, to, to love and to be interested in. But one would think that we would have total unity. Having a common goal of putting the organ out there and putting great compositions out there for it. But it's, it's, uh, it's a very diverse community. Often we can be at odds. If one or two of our members are eccentric, then, well... There are some uh, eccentric characters, shall we say, that we have to, that we deal with and we... That's, uh, that comes with the territory in a way. There are certainly challenges uh, that we face as a profession. Uh, the numbers of organists have seemed to shrink uh, in the past, uh, in past decades. Organs are very expensive because they're handmade mostly. Um, just to make one pipe, you've got to melt a combination of metals with the mouth of the pipe. There's all kinds of specific tools and bending and sharpening and positioning so that the mouth will actually speak. Declining membership in church is another issue for organists when there's not as many people, not as much money in the collection plate. There's a lot of examples you'll see in churches, giant pipe organs sitting on the altar, but there's a praise band sitting up front in front of it, so the organs aren't even used. But I don't see it going away anytime soon. Organs reflect the desires of the people who build them, and I would say that right now in New York, we're in a relatively exciting uh, time because there are a lot of new instruments that have recently been installed. And so I'd say there's great vitality in, uh, in the way that organs are being used. I think that as long as people value acoustic music, and as long as concert halls are still willing to uh, roll out grand pianos uh, rather than electronic instruments, and cellists and orchestras are willing to play uh, cellos rather than uh, electric cellos that people will value the pipe organ. I think it's something especially in this country that I found is you know the, the excitement is there, the support is there um, and I think it's it's you know our jobs as organists to, to keep this going to you know to commit to the future um, and to you know support this wonderful thing we all love um, and I think if we are if we have a positive attitude and a positive outlook on the future then you know, there's, there's great, there's great hope for us. So, I think it's it's up to us, really, whether how how this goes in the future.